Welcome to the video everyone from uh, Morocco. I'm in Marrakesh. I'm on my final day of the trip. I'm flying home tomorrow. Unfortunately, it's beautiful out here, but a really, really good, uh, good week out here. But you know, as it says in the title of this video, we're going to be looking at and focusing on the mindset of an entrepreneur. What makes an entrepreneur successful um, and what makes it work? What makes it tick? So I'm going to be getting inside my mindset. Uh, everything that I've learned along the way and sort of sharing that with uh, with all of you and you know the term entrepreneur is thrown around a lot right everyone and their mum and their dog are entrepreneurs these days so you know you've got to be be careful who you are taking information from but you know the reason that so many people classify themselves as entrepreneurs is it's a very broad term right and it, it encompasses a lot but you know, the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who sets up or starts their own business and, you know, bears the, the risks of, that that business holds or presents and, you know, will uh, reap the rewards if it's successful. So someone who's possibly an outside the box thinker and trying to better themselves, right? So if you are starting an Amazon FBA business, you are an entrepreneur, uh, whether you like it or not, right? So if you haven't liked the video yet, please give it a like, comment below, any ideas for future videos, and don't forget to subscribe, guys. And, you know, we'll jump straight into this one, basically. I'm gonna split this video up into two parts, right? The first part is, you know, what mindset do you have to have before you become an entrepreneur to get to that stage? And then in part number two, we're gonna be looking at the mindset of the entrepreneur. So how do you um, continuously maintain that level of success when you are an entrepreneur? Now, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is, is Dylan Reed. I'm 28 years old, based in the UK, although I'm here in Morocco now, I'm based in the UK. I set up an Amazon FBA business in 2017. A few years later, set up a YouTube channel. I now have a personal brand, uh, multiple streams of income, and I teach people how to do uh, the same thing, right? So uh, the, if you haven't seen a lot of videos, when you finish this one, go and have a look over, uh, over my channel. You can see uh, some of the content that I've been putting out over the last sort of year or two. The first point I wanted to mention to you guys, now remember this is before you are you know, entering the, uh, the entrepreneur space, you want to be an entrepreneur. You have to be open-minded to ideas, right? You have to be. I have spoken to and still do speak to so many people who are just so skeptical about everything, right? They don't believe that anything is possible, usually uh, focusing on making money online and you know, Quite rightly so. There are a lot of there's a lot of BS out there, and you know it is it's right to be skeptical, right? And it's right to question everything until evidence proves otherwise. Now, if you do your research and you validate a business model, that is okay, right? That's what I I want uh, people to do. But the issue is a lot of people just shut down ideas and concepts and business models. For example, Amazon FBA, they will shut it down before they've even explored the uh, nature of the business, how it works, the dynamics of the business model, they will just immediately assume it's a get-rich-quick scheme, which it's not. Uh, you've got to put work in, a lot of work in to get it, like anything, right? Nothing good comes easy. But if you have a closed mindset, narrow-minded in terms of, you know, in, in this sense of the word, you will never be an entrepreneur because you will question everything far too much, you will doubt everything, um, and you'll just be a massive skeptic. So be open-minded. Make sure you're thorough in your research. You don't just jump into things before you know much about them. You know, Forex, for example, uh, I've done my research into Forex and, you know, I uh, don't necessarily think that the people who we see online are actually earning that much from Forex trading, but that's my opinion, right? And I've done research into that and sort of backed that up myself. Uh, but you need to make sure you do that research and validate the idea, whatever it may be, right? So that's number one, open-mindedness. Now the second point, right? This is an extremely important point. So if you're at the stage now, you're, you're researching online, looking for ways to make a second income, a passive income online, you have to be a, a learning machine, right? Um, when I when I started uh, started selling on Amazon, before I you know launched my first product, I would sit up until late at night, researching, reading, and just trying to absorb all the information that I possibly could, right? There is there is loads of free information out there. Uh, there's so much on YouTube, obviously, just online in general. Just make sure you're listening to the right people. Right? Make sure you've validated who you're listening to and you don't fall down the, you know, the YouTube rabbit hole where you just spend hours and hours 
on YouTube, going round in circles, listening to lots of different people saying lots of different things. You know, focus on one person, someone you trust, someone that you have, um, you know, you, you think they've got credibility, right? So learn faster than everyone around you, right? Knowledge is power, but it's only power if you execute. If you don't execute, you just learn, 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 then you're just going to be a big bank of knowledge, right? But you're not actually going to going to have done anything with it. One of those people that will say in, you know, 30 years, oh, well, you know, I could have done all these things, but uh, but I didn't, right? We don't want to be one of those people. So I can't emphasize um, the importance of self-development, investing in your own uh, in your own learning. It's always a good investment, especially uh, with complex things like FBA, for example. It's not just a walk in the park. Tomorrow you launch a product and, you know, job done, life, life is, is complete. A lot of work goes into it, right? Which, you know, I talk about a lot on, on the channel. So that's point number two. Now, point number three, this is a huge one. It kind of ties in with the point that I just made, right? You have to be willing to take action, okay? You, like I mentioned about the, you know, the learning, learning, learning and not executing anything. If you watch tons of videos and you learn loads, but you don't actually take that first step, you don't, you know, it's a risk, right? You have to step outside your comfort zone think outside the box and take a risk to be able to um, do well, in my opinion, right? Anything that comes, uh, anything good that comes from business will have initially had a risk that was involved at the earlier stages and probably as they move through that journey as well. So you know, I speak to so many people who are afraid to take action, afraid if, it, you know, what if, what if it will fail, what if, you know, this won't work or that won't work. and. You know, it's normal to have those feelings. I have those feelings, but you have to do your best to overcome, uh, overcome them and be willing to take, you know, the leap of faith, as I mentioned in previous videos, right? But it is true. You know, if I hadn't taken that first step, invested one and a half thousand pounds, a little bit less into my first product, I would not be sitting here talking to you guys today. And that was a risk. I could have lost all of that money if I didn't know what I was doing. And very, very important, you know, I, again, I've been doing this for many years now and I speak to people and I will hear from them nine months later and they will say, Dill, I'm ready to, ready to go for this now. I've done my research. I've been watching, watching, watching. And, you know, they say, I, I'm just annoyed at myself and frustrated that I wasted time. But, you know, if you get to that stage, it doesn't matter, right? The best time to start, if you haven't started already, is now. So, you know, don't worry about it. Just... Don't look at it as a negative. Don't dwell on the past. Just focus on the future and what you are looking to achieve. Another point to, to mention is, and this is point number four, I believe, is willing to make mistakes. And open, willing is the wrong word, right? Open to making mistakes. That is when we learn, guys, right? I've made a lot of mistakes and I've learned a huge amount from those mistakes. You've probably heard of the, you know, the term trial and error. We try things and they fail and then we learn what works and then we reapply that and it works the next time. And you know, you have to be willing to accept that you will make mistakes along this journey. Again, depending on how you approach it, if you try and do everything on your own, you're likely to make many more mistakes than you would, for example, if you were to, um, if you were to follow a rigid program and have someone support you. But that's just like anything, right? If you tried to, um, if you tried to learn uh, A-level maths, by yourself, right? You're not going to do as well as if you have a professional tutor tutoring you maths, right? Just a, you know, a little, a little example there of, of what I'm trying to say. So don't be afraid to make mistakes, right? Makes mistakes are good. You learn a lot from your mistakes, and I don't believe anything great can be can be made without mistakes, uh, you know, having been made. Moving into the second phase of what I was talking about, we are an entrepreneur at this stage, right? We are an entrepreneur at this stage. We are looking at the mindset, what goes on inside the mind of an entrepreneur to make them successful. Now, I'm going to break it down again into a, into a number of points. And the first one I wanted to talk to you guys about is goal setting. Right? I um, personally find this, uh, this sort of this structure and that, that strategy, I suppose, very, very effective because what it allows you to do is actually you know, map out in front of you short term and long term goals. So you can work towards them on maybe a daily, a weekly or monthly basis. Some people make to-do lists, but it's extremely important because when you're working, you know, for yourself, right? for me, for example, right? no one gets me up in the morning. No one says to me, Dill, today you've got to go and do 
this, this, this. You've got to go and optimize that listing. You've got to respond to all your student emails. You've got to jump on a strategy call and organize a launch for a student. I've got to, you know, uh, no one tells me to go and do my self-assessment personal tax return. I've got to, you know, be able to work out what I need to do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis and get it done. And you get a lot more done when you set goals and you achieve a lot more. You know, I've mentioned um, if, uh, in another video, I'm not sure if I'm posting this one first or that one, but looking at, you know, the, the process of visualization, right? Visualizing where you want to be. A lot of people ask me, you know, Dale, is it possible to, to actually, actually launch a product and it do well and be successful? Uh, and then I can scale that product and launch more products and enjoy, you know, enjoy a little bit more of life, have a bit more time, a little bit more money, it's a different stream of income, and it, you can scale it up to be able to, you know, get up to the level that I'm at. I mean, I've done it, students are doing it, but the important, is that, uh, the important thing is that you know that it's not a walk in the park, it's not something that you can just flick on like a light switch and it will just happen. You have to work extremely hard, right, behind the scenes when you see all these people who are doing well, um, it's not, it, it comes from hard work basically and you know it takes time so accept that and you know but but again don't shut yourself down right be dream big right i've got a uh, i've got a um a picture up on my uh on the side of my desk that says dream big because i want to look at that every day and think oh, i'm going to push myself that bit further today and i'm going to make you know a slightly bigger goal and something that i want to achieve as we move down the line now number two this is a huge one guys this is a huge one right don't become complacent. Now, what I mean by that, right, is when you start to see success, let's, for example, say with a product, right, with a product that you've launched on Amazon. And for me, with products that I launch on Amazon and even my, you know, my personal branding, my YouTube channel, my Elite Academy that I run, my affiliate, uh, affiliate sort of work that I do with companies, if I just thought, well, you know, it's going well, this is going to last uh, forever. You know, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing this forever. I don't really need to change. Uh, it, it works. You know, what I'm doing now works. So I'm just going to keep doing it exactly how it is. And you kind of get comfortable. And I believe that when you get comfortable is when things can go very wrong. And if we look at it in terms of an FBA product, right? If you don't move with the times, the times will move you. You have to be constantly striving to improve what you've already got right if you've launched a product and it's going well great but let's fall back on something what if, what if you know something changes in the market what if your product gets some bad reviews you need to have plan b's backup plans you need to be looking at new products you need to be constantly striving to improve what you are already doing and not being complacent and and just you know feeling like it will last forever because you know it won't. And if I apply this to myself, I've had to constantly do this um, with my FBA business and also with my personal branding, right? The content I put out on YouTube, I'm constantly um, researching and I am trying to come up with new ideas, new content for you guys, because otherwise it will just become stagnant and it will go downhill. So it's, you know, that's very, very important. I wanna emphasize that to you guys. Now, number three, something that, you know, I know very well. Uh, my first product didn't go that well. It was because I didn't learn in the correct way. I made mistakes that I shouldn't have made. But like we said, you make mistakes and you learn. But the, the next point that I want to go on to is never give up, right? Things may not go your way the first time around. And if they don't, you get back up, you, you, know, you brush yourself off and you try again, right? You only actually fail properly when you give up, right? That's when you have officially, you know, failed at something is when you think, well, I'm, I'm I'm just going to give up now. I can't do this, right? You can do it. You're supposed to learn. It's a process. Mistakes happen. But the key is to stay focused on the end goal, accept that, you know, mistakes will happen and just never, um, never fall into that trap of just thinking that you won't be able to do something. There's always a way, right? Where there's, where there's a will, there is a way. You've just got to find out what it is. Another point that I wanted to, to mention as well is how important it is to network with as an entrepreneur with like-minded people. Now, if we look at, again, example of myself, running the Elite Academy, so teaching people how to build brands, sell products on Amazon FBA, we've got a student mastermind group. Now, that mastermind group is a hub uh, for support. Everyone is you know, chatting, interacting. There's a lot of uh, solidarity, uh, you know, um, a lot of solidarity in that group and a lot of help being given, and it helps you stay motivated. And you know, you, if you feel part of a, team family it 
encourages you to work harder and you will get better results. And, you know, I am constantly um, networking with other FBA sellers. You know, I've got one of my best friends is uh, a full-time private label seller doing extremely well. And that's all we do, right? That's, that's all we do is talk about Amazon FBA, right? For the last three years, we train every day and we chat. And if anyone else is with us, you know, we'll probably tone it down a little bit, but um, usually it's just us two. So that's all we do. That's all we talk about, right? We're networking, we're talking, we're planning, we are talking about, you know, issues that we're having, talking about, you know, what's gone well that week, how can we improve? And, you know, it, I, I believe it makes a huge difference. If you are isolated away from, from everyone and trying to do things on your own, you just lose sight of it, right? And maybe it, you know, it fizzles out. You just, you, it, the, the, um, the attraction will start to sort of fizzle out and you won't want to do it anymore. Whereas if you are around people all the time, that is less likely to happen. So that's another point that's very important. Moving on to the penultimate point, uh, something that I, uh, I work very hard on myself because at the beginning I wasn't doing this very well. And that is being accountable, right? Or accountability. So when you say you're going to do something, do it, right? If you, again, similar tying in with the goal setting, if you say you're going to do these things in a day, you have to be accountable for them. Because as soon as you lose that accountability element, you will, you'll, you'll fall off the wagon. You will start to miss the targets that you're setting yourself and things will start to go downhill. If you say to yourself, I am going to be accountable this week to do three hours product research, you know, either in the evening or in the morning. And, you know, I'm going to be working towards finding five good products that I can differentiate. I can add value and we can bring something new to market, you know, look at and address customer needs and identify a niche where a product will work. That's my goal this week. And I am accountable to make that happen. I'm not going to blame, you know, anyone else. If it doesn't happen, I'm going to make it happen and, you know, be accountable, basically pigeons scared it's gonna poop on me um but yeah very very important guys accountability like with anything in life right i am currently um i'm going away to the philippines in a few months and i am trying to um basically lean out a little bit right and, and gain a little bit of muscle so i'm setting myself goals and i'm accountable for those goals you know even on this trip i have stayed relatively healthy i've got a lot of steps in on the you know on the old on the fitbit and I'm accountable for that and because I'm leaving tomorrow if I hadn't have done those things I would be feeling very bad right now and I was thinking that earlier you know if I if I just if I just done what I wanted to and eaten loads and not done any exercise just to get away and enjoy this this break this trip I'd have felt pretty awful right I need to be accountable for my actions and for what I'm saying I'm going to do and I suppose a final a final one this is maybe a little bit slightly off topic, but you know, it does tie in with the, um, you know, how a, a good way to be, right? And you know, a, an ideal, how to look up to someone who is, um, who is doing well, someone who is a successful entrepreneur, how they should be, right? Is, is grounded, right? Down to earth. I think that you never get ahead of yourself, right? And think you're better than you are. Um, everyone is equal, right? Even if you're doing well, it doesn't matter. Stay grounded. Um, and that's very important. You know, I don't talk about my, Amazon FBA business to any of my friends. Right? I do, it's not something that we discuss, right? They might say, how's things go? And I say, yeah, fine. There's, you know, there's, I don't feel the need to be talking too much about it. On YouTube, it's different because you know, I'm helping you guys learn and you are interested in FBA, but it's important to make sure, you know, basically you stay grounded, that's what I'm trying to say. And I, I, I work on that. Um, I don't really find it too much of, of an issue to stay grounded because you know, I, I stay focused on what I need to do and I talk to people who want to listen and usually who are in the same sort of circles. And other than that, you know, all is good. So just a few thoughts from me today, guys, before I fly back home to the UK, that I wanted to, to share with you all. Um, can't recommend Morocco enough. It's a fantastic, uh, fantastic place. I've never actually been to Africa. It's a new continent to tick off the list for me. And, you know, I would definitely come back. Uh, this hotel is fantastic as well. If you guys want to find out what it is, drop a comment in the um, comment section below and I will I'll, I'll let you know. I hope you enjoyed the video everyone. Uh, I'm sure it went on a little bit longer than I had anticipated but I think it's very very important to try and grasp those points and, and try and adopt them yourself and apply them in, in your own sort of in your own life if you can especially with regard to with regard to Amazon FBA. So thanks for watching please hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Wow that was unreal.